not biology. We're not hacking into um, existing biological systems. They are biological life. They have a greater solution space than biology does. They also have, and, and there are advantages and disadvantages in that. And so the, the, the question is, how can we apply them? And so where, I, where my attention has been, I've said I've been interested in environmental influences, I've been trying to think of ways in which I could use these protocols to metabolize carbon dioxide and take it into um, the context of the built environment um, to use it as a building material. Now what's neat about architecture is that in my view, architecture is an environmental technology. It's a technology of environments. We've developed um, our architecture so that it keeps the homeostasis which we find comfortable around us. So we have nice warm environments, we've got air conditioning, we've got insulation, everything's focused on the inside. What we haven't done in architecture is turn that technological interface outwards and looked at how we can actually generate architectures that have a technological engagement with the environment. Now, like I was saying, you know, the scale that these are at, and I think scale is something very interesting. I think Max was kind of talking about that with the singularity at the beginning. And there's kind of a notion, to, um, uh, a notion I think it's Telio something, rather. Right? It's Philip Beasley sent it to me the other day. It's about um, the notion that scalar isn't necessarily the same as linear. That um, when you when you scale up systems, they don't necessarily um, uh, you know make these transitional jumps in a linear way. So, for example, the human body is an absolute um, uh, kind of an example of that. That you have tissues like blood that are bigger than organs, say like the eye, and so that just because something's a particular size doesn't mean that it's you know inherently um, you know going to have um, a, a particular order associated with it. And this order's patchy. If you think of all the different kinds of tissues in your body and, and all the kinds of different levels of organisation and association, this kind of notion of, of how scale relates to function and the kind of the observed consequences of that um, are, is, is, is much more exciting than I, than I think the, um, kind of the, the traditional engineering way of looking at materials, scale, function chemistry is, um, you know, is, is, is talking about it. So, um, so thinking about using the entire interface between architecture and, and the environment um, as, as, as being a way through which we can now start to direct microclimates first of all, then <coughs> urban environments, urban contexts, use um, these kinds of uh, dynamic material systems to um, clean up um, uh, pollution, uh, maybe replenish uh, air within, a, uh, within a, a dirty urban street and take out carbon dioxide and, and change it with oxygen. But really we're working with um, groups as well that um, would like to um, harness um, these uh, metabolisms, not just leave them as simple, um, uh, single chemical um, uh, engagements. We'd like to create a series of metabolisms so that you would go from carbon capture, say, through to fuel production. So we're creating artificial metabolisms um, on the level which we could probably now think of synthetic ecologies rather than a synthetic biology. Um, and so the, the idea of actually orchestrating the materials around us, because architecture is a managed interface, we have to engage with the upkeep and um, uh, you know, conditioning of, of, of our buildings. So we're not taking on anything new, we're just thinking about something um, that we that we thought we knew, and doing it in a different way, and so to kind of to, to scale up from um, uh, the notion of a of a protocell uh, to how it may have an architectural application. This is a thought experiment um, based on the the protocell technology that I was um, just showing you earlier. Um, these drawings are by Christian Kerrigan, who's an artist and architect. And what's happening here is that um, this is the city of Venice, um, which you know has a, a um, a complex uh, engagement with its um, environment and it's particularly um, suffering from uh, its relationship and precarious relationship with the soft geology around it and um, the, the way in which um, water um, is, is reclaiming the city. Um, and so the idea was to grow a protocell reef underneath um, uh, Venice using the protocell technology. And the idea is that we can, uh, we can uh, program protocells to move away from light. We can pro um, program protocells to um, produce um, carbonate skins. So if we 
are released um, in small doses, first of all, um, to all the, the, all the proper testing. If we release protocells into the canals of Venice, they move away from the light-filled canals so they don't clog those up. And they find, um, they find an equilibrium underneath the darkened foundations um, where they then start to um, settle and petrify the um, wood piles underneath the city. Now, the wood piles themselves are not actually the problem. What the problem is of the city is that the, the point load of the city, essentially the surface area in which it rests, is not well spread. So the idea is then that the, the protocells create an artificial base um, which essentially spreads the point load of, of, of the city. But at the same time, creates a new ecology and a new kind of synthetic connection between something that's essentially architectural and the environment. And so both the city of Venice and its local ecologies, unlike the, kind of the system of um, the Moses project with a, the with a system of about 78 gates to try and stop um, uh, you know, large fluctuations of water, and, and, you know, would, would, would kind of create new opportunities by, by just thinking about a paradigmatically different kind of technology. What kinds of approaches could we use? And, and I think if, if you were going to implement something like this, I would not suggest a monoculture of, of protocells. I would also be thinking about extremophiles, bacteria, about carbon-fixing organisms, recoralization, using the notion of synthetic ecologies to incorporate more than just things that are synthetic, but you know, synthetic biologies, but um, you know, um, uh, extremophiles, the, the whole plethora of design tools that we have available that already exist in the environment as well as creating new ones. Um, so yeah, I, I guess it's a happy ever after for technology and nature, as it were. And this is, these are some drawings done by GMJ, who um, did a lot of the London um, Futures um, uh, drawings, which, you, which you'll find online, about um, London facing um, climate change. So they've got pictures of tornadoes and London in an ice age. And so what they've done is they've drawn uh, future future Venice here, um, and it's very subtle. I mean, it doesn't look futuristic, but, but essentially what you see is literally like a line scaling over the, um, over the city, and you can see the, the, the creation of stalactites and stalagmites as the, 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 the water, and, and there's a lot of rising damp in, um, uh, uh, in Venice, and a phenomenon called efflorescence where you get capillary action and, and water gets drawn up into the buildings themselves and creates deposition of salt. So, this is, a, this is a kind of a, a geological process in an orchestrated architectural context which creates a different future for Venice, which is one where the point load of the city is spread. It's, it's not, you know, like I say, it's, it's not the, the end solution, but it's just, just one strategy that we could try to um, preserve something that we already know and love. Um, and says something really awesome about humanity as well. Um, so essentially, I just wanted to kind of summarise what I've been um, talking about. So I think that the design of environment is just as important as design of the body when we're, when we're thinking about how do we design evolution, how do we take control of our future. Um, and we can use um, technology to make rational design interventions, both within organisms and within the environment, and I personally would, um, uh, um, my personal mission is to reignite the technology of architectural exteriors and, and, and make them work with us as well to address some of these um, environmental uh, problems that we're, that we're currently facing. Um, and I think that we can think of the, the, the protocells and these um, uh, bottom-up synthetic biologies or living technologies or artificial biologies, however the terminology ends up settling, um, to, to, to help us manage the unpredictability of the environment. I don't think it's quite ready for volcanoes yet, but we, we, we may get there. Um, and so I just wanted to thank you very much for, um, for coming. Thank you for inviting me. It's, yeah, it's a fantastic audience. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to take any questions if anybody's got any. Okay. Thank you oh. very much. <laughs>